All right, the next set of topics is, is on transformations of random variables. So we've actually, we've done this um, a little bit already uh, where we have a random variable and then we define a new random variable as a function of the old random variable. And that turns out to be a, a reasonable thing to do in a lot of cases, but it's a, uh, well, sometimes it's by necessity because we have a random variable and the thing that we're interested in studying is actually a function of that random variable. But we've also seen that sometimes it's convenient to express a random variable that we're interested in as a function of another because we can leverage the properties of the other random variable and uh, bring them to bear on the first. So we saw this in the case of, for example, the uniform zero one, we related that to uh, uniforms on any interval of the real line A to B. We express the more general distribution on A to B as a transformation of the uniform zero one. And since the uniform zero one is very tractable, it actually gave us a very, um, you know, a very uh, easy way to derive properties of the more general distribution. We also did the same thing for um, normal, the standard normal to the to the to the general family of normal Gaussian random variables. So let's let y be uh, let's let x be a continuous random variable with a density F and let's suppose G is an increasing and a continuously differentiable function. So what that means is um It has derivatives and the derivatives themselves are continuous random variables. Okay, and then let's let's put a new random variable. Let's define a new random variable y to be g of x. Then the obvious question is what's the distribution of y? So that's what this chapter is all about, transformations of random variables. What is the distribution of a function of a random variable? Now, it's not always easy to do this, but for certain types of transformations, we can get a pretty nice expression and some uh, pretty nice uh, result. And some transformations make more sense than others, as we'll see. So we're going to let capital F sub x little kit little f sub x these are going to be cdf and density of x respectively we're going to let y be a real number and we're going to define function h of y as g inverse of y. So g is assumed to be an increasing continuously differentiable function. So g might look something like this. So it's increasing. And why is that important? Well, that's important because the inverse of g so if I have a value here, y, and I look over at g, 
and I look down to the value of X that generates that, it's unique because it's an increasing function. So it don't, there's only one possibility. So it's an invertible function. And so we're gonna define that inverse as H just to avoid having to write the inverse everywhere and carry that along, okay? So in this case, what do we, what can we say about the distribution of Y? Well, the distribution function of Y, that's the probability that Y is less than or equal to Y. So, as a general principle, when we're trying to work through these, it's important to, to kind of um, keep our wits about us. And what I mean by that is uh, not to try to take too many steps at once. Just follow the follow step by step. So we've written down Fy, a capital F of Y. That's the distribution function. What does that mean? That means probability of what that Y, the random variable is less than or equal to Y. Okay, what does that mean? Well, how did we define Y? Well, what do we know about Y? We know that Y is G of X. Okay, so that's the probability that G of X is less than or equal to Y. Okay, well, what do we know about G? We know that G is increasing. So it's it has an inverse and we've defined that inverse to be H. So if we apply the inverse to the left and right side, we get rid of G on the, on the left and we end up with the inverse on the right, well, now what do we have? We have an expression in terms of probabilities of X. So this is the distribution function of X. So this is exactly F sub X evaluated at H of Y, okay? So now what's the density of Y? Well, the density of Y is the derivative of, of its distribution function provided that the distribution function is uh, differentiable, right? So let's assume that it is. Well, what what is f y of y? Well, it actually, as we saw up above, is f x of h of y. And what's the derivative of this? Well, chain rule is you have to take the derivative of the, the A of H multiplied by derivative of F, which is the density of X evaluated at H of Y. So that's how we would work through these in general. And we're gonna work through these in, in cases beyond where G is just increasing as we'll see as we'll see next. But it's important to realize that the transformation of a random variable, a function of a random variable is just a random variable. And we can calculate probabilities on it, or we can reason about it in, the, in much the same way that we reason about regular, ran, you know, ordinary random variables. The important thing is that when we have a function of a random variable, so in this case, y being defined as g of x, the properties of y are endowed by the properties of x. So the properties of x, the distribution of x determines the distribution of y through g. So everything we learn, we know about y, we have to derive it through the properties of, of x. And so that's what we'll be doing here. And we're going to uh, develop some general theory and see some examples of how this can be applied uh, throughout this chapter.